Hello. Welcome to the Facebook Connect Developer Super Session. Uh, my name is Chris Pruitt, and I'm the director of the Content Ecosystem Team here at Facebook Reality Labs. Uh, in this session, I'll be joined by Tom Langan, Dave Burrell, Shira Gordon, Lee Momi, Christopher Benjaminson, and Casey Galling. Content Ecosystem is a team that's designed specifically around developer success. Our, our goal is to create a platform uh, that can support developer businesses, and in doing so, provide great content, apps and games, to our end users. There's a virtuous cycle you know, that we're trying to create, one that um, rewards those developers that make really great software on our platform financially and make sure that our customer base has a wide variety of high quality software to choose from on our platform. My personal background uh, you know, has kind of oscillated in the course of my career between working as an independent developer and working on platforms. Uh, I started as a console video game programmer. Um, after a number of years of that, I went to work at Google on Android. Then I left that platform and worked uh, at my own startup. I, I founded a game studio and made independent games for a number of years. And now I'm back on the Facebook side. I'm now working on platforms again. But having been sort of on both sides of the aisle as both an independent and as working on the platform, I'm, I'm really passionate about this particular role that, that my team has about, about building a platform for sustainability for our developer community and using that to produce the best content available. And so it's really my pleasure to open this talk today. Uh, this is my seventh Connect. Um, up until this year, you know, this, this show is called Oculus Connect. As of this year, we've, we've rebranded it to be Facebook Connect. Uh, and that's just because it's grown to be about more than just Oculus VR products. Uh, we've got a lot of other stuff in the AR VR space going on at this show today. This particular talk is going to be VR focused. It is going to be focused on VR and Oculus developers in particular. Uh, but whether this is, you know, your first Connect or your seventh, I would like to say welcome. Before we get started, I do think it's important to acknowledge that this has been a pretty difficult year. Um, it's been tough for big companies, but I think it's been really tough for smaller developers as well. Uh, I've been super impressed with the sort of strength and robustness of the developer response we've seen from our developer community. And I, I think it's important to point out, like any, any software that ships this year came from a developer that went through fire and came out the other side uh, on, on any platform. And we need to recognize those folks. OK, let's get into our, the state of our VR platform. Um, the Quest 2 announcement for us it marks a, you know, a really big moment in the history of, of VR at Facebook. I think it will end up being a quite large moment for the VR industry overall. The Quest ecosystem that we've built is humming along quite nicely. Um, in fact, I think if you look at our catalog, the catalog of content that we have uh, in Quest today is one of the strongest catalogs available in the world. Uh, and that's because Quest is a profitable platform for developers. We talk to developers that uh, will tell us that you know, Quest is the most profitable platform that they target. Uh, Mike Verdu talked a little bit about our uh, overall ecosystem growth in the keynote. That includes folks like Onward, which uh, we shipped earlier this year and got to the million dollar mark in four days of sales. And it also includes folks like uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, which took eight days to get to the million dollar mark. Clearly, the platform's uh, growing very quickly. So we've been working on putting a lot of effort into the growth of our ecosystem. And I think Quest 2 will accelerate that. But we also have a number of investments specifically designed to make your lives as developers easier. Um, we're working on new tools, uh, all, all kinds of stuff that we're going to cover in this session, uh, as well as ways to ensure that we can maintain the security and privacy of our users. Quest 2 itself is an important device because uh, it's a smaller, lighter, but also higher performance and higher resolution VR headset. Uh, it's a headset that we've develop developed based on things we've learned from all of our previous products. I mean, there's a little bit of Rift S, there's a little bit of Rift and, uh, and Quest and also Oculus Go sort of built into the design of Quest 2. 
And I think it's important to note that you know, as our Quest-based ecosystem grows, we're also expanding the ecosystem and bringing new customers to PC VR. Quest 2 uh, can be used as a PC headset via Oculus Link. It's a cable you plug in you know, from your headset directly into your PC, uh, and it can become you know, a PC VR headset. We announced earlier that um, we're going to stop selling Rift S next year, although, of course, that device and Rift are, are still supported, and our PC platform isn't going anywhere. Uh, but I actually think our PC platform is going to grow. I think a lot of folks who, who buy a Quest in order to play standalone VR games will also find out that they love to play uh, PC VR software. The Oculus Link technology is something we've been working on for a while. It's actually in beta right now, but it'll come out of beta this fall. And you'll see us continue to make investments in, in the tech and sort of improve what you can do with it. Um, one of the features that I'm really looking forward to is that soon you'll be able to use your Quest 2 headset uh, as a VR headset at 90 frames a second. Sorry, as a PC VR headset at 90 frames a second. So I think you know, the state of our ecosystem is pretty strong, and it's going to get stronger. But it's also important to note that you know, this, this moment isn't just a, an important moment because uh, we're launching a new device and that, that device is, is going to grow. We've also um, you know, spent a lot of time working on the core infrastructure in ways that will significantly affect developers. I've been at Oculus. Uh, for six years. I just had my sixth year anniversary actually at this company. And in the time that I've been here, the whole company has been really laser focused on making you know, the, the dream of virtual reality into an actual reality. Today, I think we're actually at the point where we're going to transition into a new phase of that plan. Um, and, and we're going to do it in a number of ways. I think we'll look back and say that this was kind of a, an important inflection point. One of the things I'm, I'm really excited about is we're going to start using our parent company infrastructure, the, the superpowers of Facebook, to make VR better. Um, you know, Facebook's core strength is connecting users together. It's, it's about creating communities, about finding audiences, and we think we can use it to directly increase the reach of VR applications. Um, to give you an idea of sort of the types of things we're thinking about, I would recommend you check out Greg Smith's talk about influencer sharing uh, later today. That's just one idea. It's one of the, the things where you'll see sort of first. We have a lot of other stuff planned in the pipe. But the core thing I'd like you to take away is that um, we believe that VR is a fundamentally social platform in the future. And that by leveraging Facebook infrastructure, we can make that sort of level of social interaction uh, better and better. Whether we're talking about sort of asynchronous, uh, interactions, or we're talking about you know, full co-presence with articulated avatars and uh, you know, spatialized VoIP and tracked hands and heads, or if we're even just talking about some sort of you know, traditional multiplayer video game, all of those types of applications can benefit from the infrastructure that we're building with Facebook. We're also working on things that are just you know, designed to make your life as a developer easier. Tom Langan will be here in a few minutes to talk about uh, some of the work we've been doing on graphics profilers, also uh, you know, new distribution platforms for, for applications, things like that. The, the rest of the session is really going to be a whirlwind of, of different topics. We'll have different speakers come in and sort of talk about the things that they've been working on. We'll go through um, Quest 2 specs. Uh, we'll talk about software roadmaps, uh, as well as new APIs and services that we're working on, uh, and also a little bit about how technology we have today is likely to you know, grow and expand. But the main message that I want to leave you with today is really that this is a, a pivotal moment for us. The ecosystem flywheel we've spent is spinning pretty well, and it's about to get a lot faster with the launch of Quest 2. The uh, hardware and the platform may be built by us, but the software that our users actually interact with is built by you. It's, it's built by the third-party developer community. So it's really important to us that we partner with you to build the future of VR. Thank you for attending today. Now let me introduce Tom Langan.
Hi, I'm Tom Langan. Our team at Facebook is responsible for the roadmap of developer features for Oculus. This includes tools and other products that make it easier to be efficient and generate more revenue. We've shipped several features recently and more arriving in the coming months. All of this is informed by feedback from you, our developers. I'm excited to share technical details about Quest 2, improvements that will make it easier to build and monetize your apps, and new innovations that will create greater human connection in VR. When we designed Quest 2, we took into account feedback from developers like you. We heard you want higher fidelity visuals, open worlds, and more complex systems. You asked for a lot, more CPU power, more GPU, more RAM, and higher resolution displays. Thanks to your feedback, with Quest 2, you'll have improvements in all those areas. The displays on Quest 2 are 1832 by 1920 per eye. That's about 50% more pixels than Quest and 90% more pixels than Rift S. This allows for more detail, crisper text, and no perceptible screen door effect. Quest 2 is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 platform. Compared to the Snapdragon 835 in the original Quest, you'll have about 46% more CPU, 33% more GPU, even with the larger eye buffers, and slightly higher I.O. speeds. Uh, Quest 2 will also have 6 gigabytes of RAM compared to 4 in the original Quest. In other words, there'll be plenty of additional performance available to your apps. While you still need to design with a mobile uh, standalone VR perf envelope in mind, with Quest 2, you'll be able to do things that weren't possible on Quest. We've seen amazing innovation in PC VR on Rift, Rift S, and most recently, Quest with Oculus Link. Quest 2 will also support Oculus Link, and when it launches, it'll be the highest resolution Oculus device for experiencing PC content. We believe that Quest 2 will offer the best of both worlds between standalone VR and PC VR, bringing in new audiences and higher levels of visual fidelity for developers creating for Oculus on the PC. In addition to the hardware performance improvements we're making with Quest 2, we're also, we also want to make sure you can squeeze every drop of performance out of all of our devices. That's why we were early adopters of Vulkan for VR development. We shipped Vulkan support for Unreal Engine 4 in 2019. By supporting Vulkan early, apps such as InDeath, Trover Saves the Universe, and Lies Beneath were able to ship this summer to Quest. Earlier this year, we were the first VR platform to add Vulkan support to Unity. We launched with an experimental label to get early feedback from developers and are working together with Unity to ship production support. We're excited to see Unity titles ship on the Oculus platform soon. You can learn more about Vulkan support at the dedicated Unity and Unreal sessions coming up. Fix Foveated Rendering, or FFR, has been a great tool for improving app perf. It allows apps to render at the periphery of the scene at lower resolution than the center, which reduces overhead. In the past, developers had to hand-tune FFR settings for single individual device targets. But with a feature called Dynamic FFR that launched earlier this year, the system will dynamically adapt foveation level based on GPU utilization. With Dynamic FFR, you'll be able to develop for Quest and Quest 2 and get the best experience on each device. Best of all, we enable Dynamic FFR by default on Quest 2, which means that existing Quest apps will look their best on Quest 2 automatically, no modifications required. Let's talk about OS improvements. Something we've heard is that you'd like the system UI to do more of the work for you without pulling people out of your app. Our universal menu is used for many functions, including recording videos and taking screenshots. We're rolling out the ability for universal menu to come up as an overlay without pulling people out of your app. Other system UI like media sharing, friend requests, and in-app purchasing will also appear as overlays so people can stay engaged in your experience. In case you want to take action to just pause your game when an overlay appears, we're introducing new focus APIs that will notify you. 
Another frequently requested feature has been a standard system keyboard. In August, we introduced a new API that will bring up the system keyboard as an overlay over your app. Now you can add a keyboard to your app with a single API call rather than designing a new keyboard from scratch. Now, when we release Quest OS updates, some of you have said you'd like early access to test your apps. To enable this, we've introduced the Developer Preview Channel, or DPC. DPC gives select developers early access to preview OS releases. This enables you to test your application prior to launch uh, and provide feedback. Talk to your developer relations engineering contact for access to DPC. Now, let's talk about distributing, monetizing, and promoting your apps. We've heard from some of you that you'd like to offer subscriptions to your customers. We'll be rolling out an in-app subscription option in the first half of next year. We've also heard from many developers that you'd like better ways to distribute your apps, even if they aren't listed in the Quest Store. Earlier this year, we announced a system to deliver apps directly to end users via a link in a safe and seamless way. You'll be able to promote your app via a product URL that will take a customer to an Oculus product page where they can purchase and download the app from our servers without the need for sideloading. And then once installed, apps distributed via this new channel will appear in the user's library like any other app. They can receive updates and leverage Oculus APIs. We're still working on this feature, but you should look for it early next year. Okay, video. We know video plays an important role in app promotion and in telling the story of VR to new audiences in general. We're investing to increase the quality and quantity of shared video content. Mixed Reality Capture, or MRC, is a feature that enables people to capture themselves from a third-person perspective superimposed on a VR experience. Earlier this year, we published a tool for creators to capture video from both Quest and PC VR apps. A growing number of developers have added MRC support to their apps, and trailers created with MRC are responsible for a measurable lift in sales in the Oculus Store. This year, we're taking the concept of third-person video capture to the next level by integrating it into the Oculus app for iOS and Android in a new feature we call Spectator Mode. Once you add support to your app, your customers will be, will be able to use their smartphone to stream third-person video in real time with the option to record video and share it via any other app. Imagine capturing a video in VR and sharing it as an Instagram story in just a few taps of your smartphone. For more information on subscriptions, new release channels, and mixed reality capture, there will be a dedicated session for these topics. You heard us talk about how the future is human, and we want to give you the technology to make that possible. At the end of 2019, we gave developers a sneak preview of hand tracking for Oculus Quest. With support for hand tracking, apps such as Elixir, Richie's Plank Experience, The Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets, and Waltz of the Wizard are bringing a new level of immersion to gaming. Hand tracking was a big step forward, and we're thrilled with the reception it's received from our community. We want to take this immersion even further, and we're working on improved human understanding. Soon, we will launch inferred upper body motion, which will make torso and shoulder movement more natural. We want to make it simple to integrate all of our current and future enhancements to your apps, so we're introducing the new Body API. Body API provides a single skeletal model and fuses together all these inputs across hand tracking, headset and controller tracking, upper body motion, and in the future, our lip sync APIs. With Body API, interactions in VR will be more authentic than ever before. Check out the session on avatars and platform SDK to learn more about the Body API. With these improvements to platform, hardware, and monetization, we hope your apps will be more immersive, more compelling, and more successful than ever before. The primary input into our developer roadmap is feedback from you, including surveys. So please make your voice heard. We will listen. Speaking of developer feedback, we've been making big improvements to the Oculus developer experience. Next up is David Burrell.
Hey everybody, my name is David and this is my seventh Connect. It's been quite a thrill to see the ecosystem grow from Oculus Share to the creative industry that it is today. As the manager of the VR development environment team here at Facebook Reality Labs, we work every day with devs like you. Actually, my main goal is to maximize your return on investment in order to grow the overall VR ecosystem. Our team builds the tools and APIs you use to make VR apps. And one of the biggest pieces of feedback we receive every time we ask is that our edit compile test loops are too slow. Over the last few months, our Unity and UE4 integrations have both shipped significant iteration time improvements. We've also made some changes that benefit native devs. For Unity developers, we've shipped OVR, Build, APK, and Run, OVR Quick Scene Preview, and Shader Stripping. Together, these improvements have made iteration two to five times faster for our Horizon and Strike teams. Check out Neil and JJ's talk for more. For UE4 and native developers, we enabled skip APK build when iterating on code, so developers can bypass repackaging an APK when iterating on code changes. Additionally, we've added support for fast build, which can help greatly speed up large code compiles by leveraging remote compute resources. Learn about these iteration time improvements and other engine partner improvements at our platform focus sessions for Unity and Unreal. Altogether, we've sped up UE4 iteration by several fold. Check out Joe and Steve's talk for more details. We've also dedicated time to improving our code samples and documentation to provide you with better support throughout development. We recently shipped a collection of UE4 code samples called the Essentials that covers key VR use cases, including locomotion, shadows, text, and more. We've revamped our documentation portal to be device focused so you can access relevant information quicker. Additionally, we've added more guides such as mobile optimization tools, mixed reality capture and casting guide, app submission guide, and more. Finally, we restructured the navigation framework of the Oculus Developer Dashboard, made enhancements to the app submission process, and redesigned the entire site with a heavily supported, modernized design system, enabling you to efficiently discover and navigate through different tools, more easily optimize your app submission, and manage your applications. These changes establish a foundation for upcoming major improvements to the site. We'll continue to invest in this area, so keep an eye out for more code samples, even better documentation, and an improved developer dashboard. In addition to improving our development experience, Facebook and Oculus have played a central role in the development of OpenXR. OpenXR aims to simplify VR development by enabling developers to reach more platforms while you're reusing the same code. We announced in July that we're going to officially support OpenXR 1.0. Developers can now submit their OpenXR apps to the Oculus Store. We've also recently launched APIs to give you precise control over the color of each pixel, allowing you to immerse users in vivid, nuanced colors that match what you mastered. We know that one of the most time-consuming aspects of developing for Quest is performance tuning of your app. This year, we shipped three tools that will help take the guesswork out of profiling, allowing you to optimize more quickly and effectively. We've also been working with Qualcomm over the past year to bring you the Performance Interface Library, the PIL is a low-level API that gives us GPU information that you could only get through Snapdragon Profiler before. It's embedded in the Quest operating system and gives us two main types of information, render stage metrics and real-time metrics. This information is now available through two more tools, GPU SysTrace and OVR GPU Profiler. Now you can know exactly what the GPU is working on with minimal overhead. First, OVR GPU Profiler is a command line tool that provides real-time GPU pipeline metrics and render stage tracing. Second, GPU SysTrace aggregates GPU data such as render stage timings with call stack traces to shed light on how different parts of your code contribute to GPU perf. Third, RenderDoc for Oculus. Now RenderDoc is one of the most popular graphics debugging tools and it's already heavily used on Quest. But we've released an Oculus specific edition which has been modified to provide access to low-level GPU profiling data from Quest and Quest 2. Before jumping in with these tools, our real-time perf overlay OVR metrics monitor is still the best starting point for identifying perf hotspots in your app. If you're interested in perf optimization, I highly recommend the upcoming deep dive session with Remy Polandri on profiling. Finally, I'm thrilled to announce the work of our developer success team. 
Today, we're launching the Oculus Developer Hub, a cross-platform desktop tool to reduce development friction and improve two-way communication with our developers. ODH streamlines common Oculus development tasks and helps everyone at your studio, developers, artists, QA, marketing, to be more productive in their roles. ODH will enable easier device management, debugging, casting, screenshotting, and video recording. It'll enable host and device side package management, notifications, and platform updates. Over time, it'll do even more. Download ODH today and check out our ODH Lightning Talk later this afternoon with the development team. Before I hand off to Shira Gordon, who will talk about Oculus Media Studio and Oculus TV, I wanted to thank you for all the input you've provided that's resulted in these improvements. Your contribution drives our roadmaps. Please keep the feedback coming. Take it away, Shira. Hi, I'm Shira Gordon, and I lead the product design team for the Facebook Reality Labs media organization. My team works on Oculus Media Studio, Oculus TV, Venues, and Quill. And I'm here to tell you about what we've been doing to better serve our creator community. Because we aren't just building for developers, we're serving storytellers and creators too. Last year, we announced Oculus Media Studio which is where creators can upload content to Oculus TV. In 2020, a major focus for our team has been you, our creators. We're excited to share some new features with you that will elevate your work like never before, allowing you to truly connect to your viewers. First, the cornerstone of this work has been creator portfolios. Creators are storytellers, and so we've made it possible for you to tell your story in new and meaningful ways. Available now on the web, you can showcase your work, tell the story of your organization, and link to other important pages across the web. This can be used now at creators.oculus.com, and we encourage all creators to customize and publish their portfolios. While discoverability and shareability on 2D flat surfaces is incredibly important, we also know that discoverability in headset has been a pain point. That's why in the next few months, these creator portfolios, similar to what you see here, will be available on Oculus TV from anywhere a creator's work appears. That means when a viewer watches something that they love on Oculus TV, with creator portfolios, they can now dig deeper and find even more of the work that you've created. Now, as we mentioned, this is just the beginning. Until now, creator portfolios have displayed videos with your most recent work highlighted first. And some creators want the ability to display their most recent work first, but others want a choice. We heard you and we agree. You should be able to display your work in the way that you see fit, which is why in the coming months, we will be launching creator playlists where creators can organize content into playlists and choose how those playlists are displayed or shared, similar to what you see here. This means as a creator, you will have more control over your content than before, and viewers will be able to dive into the content the way you intend, creating a deeper bond between creator and consumer. These playlists will be viewable on creator portfolios on both web and with Oculus TV. Now all of this will be managed from our brand new Oculus Media Studio portal, which we have been hard at work overhauling to make uploading, managing, and curating your work a better experience. We think you'll be delightfully surprised by the updates focused on optimization of both workflow and system efficiency. Speaking of which, in the new Oculus Media Studio, you'll be able to measure engagement and track performance in ways not possible before through the brand new insights page, similar to what you see here, that will display consumption and viewer engagement in addition to the lightweight analytics that were already available, such as video view count. All of this work has been done to ensure that you're able to connect as best as possible with your viewers 
and provide the world with the amazing and immersive and powerful stories you have to tell. Of course, what ties this all together is the ability to reach your audiences through the system level surface for media that is Oculus TV. There are so many incredible creators that broke new ground with Oculus TV this year. You can find immersive animations like Soda Island that take you to imaginative worlds of the artists who create them by hand using Quill, and immersive videos that transport you to Everest or allow you to re-experience Notre Dame before the fires. But rather than telling you about them, let's take a look. Such incredible work. We're all looking forward to seeing what inspiring and groundbreaking pieces you create next. Thank you. And here's Lee. Hi, my name is Lee Momi. Effectively, I'm a consultant to developers, able to provide perspective and insights into the VR content ecosystem. Uh, more specifically, of course, on how that information relates to their own content. Together with developers, I discuss both short and long-term content strategy. Whenever developers are choosing which input and interaction methods are the most effective for their content, I always say that it's hand presence that is key to immersion. Um, in some experiences, hands just make sense, really. Natural and intuitive hands are the primary way that we interact with our environment. Giving developers flexibility when ideating really opens the doors for creativity. Flexibility of input interactions, like with hands, can be most impactful, uh, particularly in the early stages, uh, like when developers are prototyping new content. In the case of my friends at Fast Travel Games, They've created a world where you intuitively want to interact with your hands. I'd like to introduce you to Christopher Benjaminson of Fast Travel Games. Christopher and his team were among the first developers to dive in depth into the Oculus hand tracking SDK. Today, he's going to share with you insights, learnings, and challenges that he and his team have learned in working with that hand tracking. Please welcome my friend, Christopher Benjaminson. Thanks, Lee. Hi, as Lee said, I'm Christopher. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Fast Travel Games, a VR game studio located in beautiful Stockholm, Sweden. And I'm happy to be here today to uh, share some of our experiences of adding hand tracking to one of our games, The Adorable, The Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets. When we create games at Fast Travel Games, there are a few things we care a little extra for. We want to create fantastic worlds, worlds that we can transport our players to, for them to explore, enjoy and immerse themselves in. This means that player presence is very important to us. What can we do to maintain the illusion and not break immersion? One very important factor to this 
is world interactions. Allowing our players to interact with the world with our hands is key for them feeling present in our worlds. It's also one of the things that I really love about VR. Being able to visit worlds and places and do things I can't in real life. We've come a long way in the past four years and we're still only in the beginning of all of this. So I can't really wait to see what we will be able to do in the future as technology advances. With Curious Tale, we wanted to create a game that was the perfect introduction to VR. Something anyone could enjoy, regardless of their background. We said that as long as you like to smile, then The Curious Tale is a game for you. To do so, we've removed some of the complexities we typically see in VR games. We have no virtual locomotion, and we have a simple interaction model based on you as a player poking items in the world. And it's all wrapped in these beautiful small little worlds full of life and interactions. So why add hand tracking? Well, at fast travel games, technology is important. And not only because I'm a tech guy, even though that helps, but because technology can spawn creativity and unlock new opportunities and possibilities. So we like to try new technologies early on to see if and how our games can benefit from these technologies. And hand tracking is a great example of this. But tech aside, hands is a very intuitive way to interact, and we felt that hand tracking could make a game even more accessible. So The Curious Tale was the perfect candidate. We had a game with the world in front of you, a simple interaction model, and a game that was designed to be accessible already with motion controllers. So the idea of making the game even more accessible with hands was very compelling to us. So when the Oculus hand tracking SDK became available, we started testing uh, hand tracking with Curious Tale and just to see if we could do the things we wanted. And we could immediately see the potential. To really understand what it meant to have hand tracking uh, and what the opportunities for the game could be, we uh, started prototyping a fully dynamic and procedural uh, interaction model to really learn what it meant to have a skeleton-based interaction model and not just buttons and joysticks that we were used to. And what we realized was that hand tracking can really improve the sense of presence in the world if the world responds the way you anticipate it to do. So to uh, figure out what was the right way for the curious tale, uh, we started observing people play the game. And what we saw was that people would poke at items with their index fingers and use a pin script to pick up small items. So we early on decided that these behaviors would be the core of our interaction model. And as you can interact with almost anything in the game, it's really rewarding poking at animals and items with your fingers and have them respond to your touch. It really improves the feeling of immersion and presence in the game. Now, every game is unique and handles input differently. Uh, in, in The Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets, instead of using uh, the raw tracking data as is, like we would do with buttons and joysticks, we implemented our own confidence and tracking evaluator that looks at tracking and confidence over time to filter out any spikes. This allows us to uh, give different fingers a different weight and uh, make the fingers that we care the most about contribute the most to the input model. The end result is that we provide our players with a solid experience and good-looking grips. So for games such as The Curious Tale, hand tracking is great. Of course, there are things that we can improve, but you know, the poke and pinch interactions are just a perfect match for hands. And uh, not only does it make the game more accessible, it also gives the player more choices of how to play and give them the freedom to choose how they want to play. We're only at the beginning of our hand tracking journey and we will keep exploring hand tracking as there's so much potential left to uh, be unleashed. We see a new example of this every day in the community. 
One example, uh, as we take the learnings from our games Apex Construct and The Curious Tale and improve the interaction model for our upcoming game, Wraith the Oblivion Afterlife, one cool experiment that we did with hand tracking was to use the technology as a hand pose authoring tool, allowing us to capture real hands for our interactions. So what will you do? Let's keep experimenting and push the bounds of what's possible with VR. Thank you so much. Wow. As I sit and listen to the previous speakers, many of these folks are people that I work with every day, and we're in meetings talking about these solutions all the time. And yet it's almost as if I'm hearing it for the first time because I'm in so much anticipation for what you will create. Whether it's your first project or your third project, going deeper, it, it should be more easy uh, based off of what we just uh, announced. These solutions, these improvements that we're driving are really all a direct feedback from you. You're charting the Oculus developer experience. And I couldn't thank you enough. We've sent you surveys. We've asked for your input. You've shared it on forum posts and emails. And all of that is defining a roadmap that is built to benefit you. So thank you. Now, before I get any further, I should probably introduce myself. I'm Casey Galang, and I lead the developer ecosystem team. Today is my first Facebook Connect, as it is for all of you. But when added with my tenure at Oculus Connect, I have five years of being able to spend time with you. The groundbreakers and innovators of VR, Oculus developers. And wow, what a year. You've done so much. Let me just gush really quick. You've, you've slayed beaked lunatics. You've crested insurmountable mountains. And you've taken us to one of Saturn's moons, and you've done all of this while faced with killer animatronics and, and zombies and hangry enchanted creatures. You've given us the biggest rushes, and you've taken us on journeys that we never thought possible, and really some we never even imagined. You've broadened our perspective in a time when it is so important. You've opened up new possibilities in co-working, and thanks to some of you who've helped me combat the fact that my kitchen is so nearby with fitness apps. Some of you have moved me to tears, and all of you have made me cheer. You've done so much this year. In fact, you've shipped nearly 550 titles on the Oculus Store since the last time we were together at Connect. We continue to see breakout hits like Onward and Five Nights at Freddy's on Quest. We see you really pushing the bounds of your imagination as you bring titles we know and love like Tetris and reimagine them for VR. You're experimenting with new technologies like hand tracking, in the most adorable titles like The Curious Tale of Stolen Pets, as Christopher just shared. You are finding your path and growing in programs like Oculus Start and Oculus Launchpad, which are near and dear to my heart, as we're the team who run both of those programs. In fact, I'd love to share with you what the 2019 Oculus Launchpad cohort accomplished since last year. Buckle your seatbelts, chunks! Drive, honey, drive! Ah! Let's see those snake eyes. Wait, where am I? Oh, this is my old room. I'm Luna. You're not like the 
other droids. Now, these titles haven't shipped yet, but I can't wait for them to because they're really, really so engaging. The past few days, our most recent addition to the Oculus Launchpad family spent three days in an intensive workshop online. And they'll continue to hone their craft over the next couple of months as they bring their ideas to AR and VR. So to the newest members of the Oculus Launchpad family, welcome. And we so look forward to supporting you along this journey. Now let's talk about the Oculus Start developer community. They continue to refine and shine through their creations. And rather than me talking about it, why don't I show you a showcase from the Oculus Start developer community. And they're not stopping there. Right now, in fact, the Oculus Start developer community is jamming in a hackathon that started September 13th in honor of Jose Zambrano. Jose was an early and passionate member of the Oculus Start developer community who we devastatingly lost in November of last year. Together with Playcrafting and Unity, this year's jam will emphasize the importance of amplifying voices from early developers. And that was really a core mission of Jose's and, and he embodied it in everything that he did. The team will keep us updated on progress over the next week as they finish up uh, their jam on September 26th. Keep a lookout on the Oculus Developers Facebook group for all of the greatness that comes out of this effort. And to all of you hacking, remember to stay hydrated and stay well rested. I'm so looking forward to what the rest of the year and beyond holds. I believe we'll see even more content across fitness and productivity, collaboration and health and wellness, and of course, entertainment. We'll see huge leaps in quality and pedigree and scope in VR. And we'll find more togetherness in our community as we lift up diverse voices such that more of our content across the Oculus catalog will be representative. And I promise, and I know you will too, that we will make more of our circles, in fact, all of them inclusive. The team and I will continue to remain focused on improving the Oculus Core platform. And we'll, as always, be invested in enabling more possibilities for developers through solutions and, possible, uh, and programs. And we'll bring new value to Oculus uh, device holders. And all of this, all of what we're doing today and tomorrow will lead to increased engagement from a much larger community of VR consumers across so many more generations. And together, we'll make sure that the future is human because 
you're the greatest uh, talent in AR and VR. And we're not only honored to call you our partners, but also our friends. We look forward to connecting with you over the course of the next few hours, and more importantly, growing the closeness of this community. Now for a little bit of housekeeping, we have a number of great sessions and lightning talks that will continue to air throughout the day and more will be available on demand. And it wouldn't be Facebook Connect without John Carmack Unscripted. So keep a lookout for his talk as I'm sure it'll expand your mind as it does mine every year. Be sure to stay tuned throughout the course of the next few hours in fact, a really great session that I'm super excited about uh, will air from the great Mizuguchi-san as he talks about how he reimagined Tetris and Res for VR. In the meantime, stay healthy, have a great Facebook Connect, and we'll see you soon.